Hey everyone, welcome to Play Hooky with me. My name is Roz and in today's video I'm going to be sharing how to make this quick and easy crocheted cat hat. This is a beginner friendly pattern where we'll be working flatly with half double crochets. The beauty of this pattern also is that with one simple tweak you can use the same pattern to create a classic beanie. Before we get started, I do want to share some measuring tips, but as always, there are timestamps along the progress line so you can skip to your point of interest. The yarn that I used in this project is by Loops and Threads called Charisma. This is a super bulky yarn, super bulky 5, requiring an 8mm hook. The skein weighs 3 ounces and has 93 yards, and I was easily able to make one adult sized hat. You can use whatever yarn you like. I just prefer the bulky yarns because it works up more quickly. In the description box below, I've added some average head measurements. This will help you to kind of get an idea of what you're looking for. But I would highly recommend that you go ahead and grab yourself a tape measure or a string to do the measurements yourself for more accuracy. The two measurements that you want to take are your head circumference and your head height. To get your head circumference, just take your tape measure and wrap it around your forehead, above your ear, and above your eyebrow. Next, you want to measure the height of your head. This is going to show how high you're going to make your hat. Take your tape measure or string and measure from ear to ear going over the top of your head. Once you have that number, go ahead and divide it by two, and that will give you the height of your head. One of the things you want to keep in mind is something that's called negative ease. Negative ease simply means that we're going to be working smaller to make it fit better. You want to aim for three to five inches shorter than the measurement of your head circumference. So for example, my measurement was 21 inches for my circumference, and I made mine 18 inches long. Now once you've got the height of your hat, you want to add a few inches to this to take into account the ears that you're going to be stitching in and a brim if you want to have one. So even though my head height, for example, is five and a half, I ended up making mine 11 inches high to take this into account. This is going to take some trial and error, but 11 inches is pretty standard for this style hat. For this project, we're going to be working flatly and we're going to be starting with the height of our hat and then working our width. Like I was mentioning in the section earlier, I'm going to go to 11 inches. Now I'm using the same yarn that I used in black, but I'm using a white color just so it's easier to see on camera. I'm starting with a slip knot on my hook. For this bulky 5 yarn and 8 millimeter hook, it's going to take me 25 chains to reach that 11 inches. So I'm going to chain 25. So I've reached the height that I want here, and I'm going to go ahead and add one more chain for my turning chain. To work this pattern, we're going to be working with half double crochets, skipping that first chain from the hook, working into the second chain there, yarn over, go into your loop, yarn over again, pull through, yarn over, and pull through all three loops. That is a half double crochet. We're just going to be doing this all the way down. Yarn over, going into that top loop. Yarn over, pull through, pull through all three. Just do this all the way down. Last one. Now one thing that I would recommend, especially if you're working black for this hat, I would recommend that you get yourself some stitch markers and once you start a row and finish a row, go ahead and add a stitch marker because these are the areas that are going to be very difficult to see as you're working to keep that count straight. Once you've got your 25 stitches or whatever number you've decided on, go ahead and chain one and turn. I like to flip from the front over that way the yarn is in the place that I want it to be. For this project we're going to be doing a ribbing effect and it's really easy to do. We're simply going to be working into the back loop of these stitches. Now to make sure that you're getting into the proper back loop you want to pull your work forward towards you and look at the V's at the top here. You're going to be working into this back stitch right here. A good rule of thumb when you're working is to make sure that you're seeing like a V in front of you. Don't work into this thinking it's the back loop. You're going behind it. So yarn over, going into that back loop there, yarn over, yarn over, pull through all three, 
to create your first stitch. And a good gauge here is once you've done that, you'll see that you still have the V in front of you and you've worked into that back loop behind. And you're just going to do this all the way across. Another quick tip here, if you want a more narrow ribbing effect, you can do the same pattern but with single crochets instead of half double crochets. Okay, we're nearing the end. There we go, it's kind of twisted back there but it is there. So chain one and turn. If you're having a hard time knowing where to put your first stitch, you've got the loop on your hook, you have a little chain there, and then you have your stitch. And then you'll see that complete V, complete V. That's where you want to work into for your first stitch. And just continue doing this, working into the back loop. Okay, and then once you've reached your width, you should have something that looks like this. Now for demonstration purposes, I only went up to 16 inches. For the hat that you see in the video, I went up to 18 inches. Remember, you want to go three to five inches shorter than your head circumference. It's time to go ahead and join our two sides together to form our hat. Fold towards you. This way it will bring your loop to the front to make it easier to work on. Go ahead and get your crochet hook. We're essentially now working inside out. We're going to do a slip stitch across here, and then we're going to continue on with the top. This will be the top of your hat, creating the points of your hat. Chain one. We're going to work into the two stitches that are towards us and the back loop of the side that's facing away from us. So we're just going to go in here, top two loops, and then just the back loop pull through and slip stitch. Back loop only there, pull through and slip stitch. And just continue this all the way down. Nice and relaxed. Now, if you're continuing on to make the cat hat, you want to just turn around here, turn the edge, and continue on with what you were doing. Back and pull. This side is a little more tricky to join, only because you don't have precise stitches to go into. Just do the best you can. Just continue slip stitching, trying to keep in the same location. As you can see, I'm not too fancy with this. I just want to make sure that the two sides are attached. Okay. This point, go ahead and fasten off. I'm not going to right now because I want to show you how to do a regular beanie. But once you've fastened off, just go right side out and your hat is complete. And as you can see, you can't even tell where you did the join. It looks the same all the way around. To make the ears, I found a tape measure to help a lot. I like my ears to be about three inches from the top and three inches from the bottom, but you can play with this and see what kind of height or shape you want your ears to be. So what I'm going to do is just do a stitch marker at the top here for a guide. and a stitch marker here at the bottom. And then I'm just going to stitch across here to make my ear. Go ahead and get a stretch of yarn about three times the length here. I like to add a little knot there just to help me anchor this in place. This is a finishing needle by Susan Bates. I get asked this quite a lot. I order this online because I find it very difficult to find in stores lately. And then I just go through the back here, making sure to get both sides of the hat. Okay, and that's just kind of tucked in there. Nothing fancy here, just making sure I get both sides of the hat. 
kind of eyeballing this. Just using my fingers to guide. Quick tip here, you think when you're working on this that you want to tie, pull this really tight, but you actually don't. You don't want to pull too, too tight, just enough to give the idea and effect of an ear. If you pull too tightly, it's going to round it on you and it's going to look more like a bare ear. Just use your eyes again as your guide. I would wait before stitching this in. I would go ahead and work on the second ear. I found from experience that I'll do all of that and then I like the next year better or they're not matching as much as I want. So I just leave that there for now and then just repeat on the other side. If you're wanting to do a regular classic beanie, at this point after you've seamed the one side together, go ahead and fasten off. Now we're just going to get a strand of yarn and seam this together separately. Let's do three times the length of the top here, just for good measure. Get your darning needle. This is just called a finishing needle. This is by Susan Bates. If you're interested in this, I'll have it in the description box below. So to make this into a classic beanie, all we're going to do is we're just going to be threading our yarn through the top, just weaving back and forth. So just pick a spot. And we're just going to weave in. I'm actually not going to go into those spaces there. I want to kind of close that as I go. And I'm just going in and back out. You're just going to do this all the way around. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Just get close to the one that you're going to tie it with, okay? And then all you're going to do is just pull it closed, just cinch it closed. I'm just going to tie this and pull as tight as you can. Double knot. You'll weave in those ends, of course. There you have a standard classic beanie. And at this point, if you like, you can add a little pom-pom. I don't know what the right way is to do this. I always just add a piece of yarn through this to pull it through. Maybe someone watching can tell me how you're really supposed to do this, because I'm really not sure. And I just do that. Then going into the center, pull it through. And then I just take these two ends and I weave them in and tie it tight. But you get the idea.